So let's get started. And to get started, I'm going to ask us all to um, stand up and form a circle. Actually, you know what? Before I do that, you'll see on your table there's a sticky note, yeah? a stash of sticky notes. Do you see that? Yellow, yeah? I want you to grab that stash of sticky notes and I want you to answer this question for yourself. <coughs> so what are your two strengths and your two weaknesses when you lead and when you are led? It's just for you. It's not a test. There's no right or wrong answer. There's only an honest answer. So you just answer the question for yourself. Yeah? What are your two strengths? Struggling, eh? It's like, I got no weaknesses. What are you talking about? Two strengths and two weaknesses for when you lead and when you are led. Cool. Okay, take these two sticky notes and put them somewhere safe because it's just for you. And we will revisit it a bit later. So put it in your notebook. We shall come back to it a bit later. Yeah? So form a circle, yeah? Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Excellent. Um, can I put it in the circle? Yes. Thank you. All right. Cool. Okay. So if we could all stay, take one step back, yeah? One step back. There we go. Yep, one step back such that we can move one step forward if necessary, okay? All right, so here's what we're going to do. I am going to read a number of statements. And if the statement holds true for you, you make a step into the circle. You pause for a couple of seconds, and then you step out, yeah? No comments, no nothing. Step in, take stock around you, quietly, silently, and then you can step out, okay? Sounds good? All right, um, step into the circle if you enjoyed lunch. Facebook, take note. Thank you. That was just a test. Um, step into the circle if you're excited to be in Accra today. Take a step into the circle if you have personally worked with or collaborated with somebody else in this circle. Thank you. Step into the circle if you regularly manage or lead people. Um, step into this circle if you are often frustrated by the people you manage, the people you lead. One tiny step is fine. I appreciate the need to make emphasis. Thank you. Um, step into the circle if people look up to you for direction and guidance. Thank you. Step into the circle if you have ever intentionally hurt somebody. Step into the circle if you have ever intentionally hurt somebody. Thank you. Step into the circle if you find it quite easy to lead other people. No comments. You interpret it as you want, yeah? Step into the circle if you find it easy to be led by other people. Thank you. Thank you. 
Ah, uh -uh. stay right there. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna count, starting from here. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Make sense? Yeah? Yeah? All the ones at this table, now, everybody just stay in the circle. <coughs> oh, you got comfortable, eh? You built a nest. All the ones, you can grab your stuff if it's somewhere else. All the ones, get your stuff. Not yet, all the ones first, yeah. Grab your stuff and come to this table. All the twos, grab your stuff and move to that table over there. And all the threes, please take this table on my Right. <coughs> One, two, and three. There should be at least five people here. All right. Excellent. Okay, so. As we identified in the circle, it is not always easy to lead others, yes? So to get started, I'm gonna, somebody mentioned as they're working, it's like, oh my God, this, is, this looks like school. Well, duh, what do you expect from, you know, somebody who runs a university? Um, I do hope, however, that we believe that leadership is a lifelong journey and there's always something to learn, yes? And for the next 60, 70 minutes, I hope that we're gonna walk away with some, you know, maybe not profound, but significant lessons that we can find um, useful, fair enough? Okay, all right, now on your table, in the center of your table, you'll see an envelope. Yeah, you see that? So can somebody volunteer to take that envelope and open it for your group? There's a bunch of stuff in it, so you remove them gently. All right, all of it, yep. Yeah. Excellent. You will see a certain set of instructions there are three copies, so two people could share a copy, and I want you to read those instructions. All right, so each table is a company. Yes, each thing is a company, but you specialize in a very unique form of art. Yes, and your task in the next 45 minutes is to produce a prototype of a piece of art in your area of specialization. Yes, however, you each have an individual role to embrace. So if you could please pass around the envelopes randomly. Yeah, one person should be able to have an envelope. And you open your envelopes, it shall reveal the role that you will embrace in this company of yours. Thank you. All right, so each company should have a chief executive officer, CEOs. Can you please raise your hand? All right. Every company should have a chief operating officer, COOs, raise your hand. Excellent. Every company should have a chief design officer, CDOs, please raise your hand. Excellent. Together, you form the executive team of your company and the rest, the regular employees. Your task is to contribute to the success of the company, yes? So, we are pressed for time because we had to crunch our session a little bit. Um, we've run a bit, a bit over time. So here's what's going to happen. You are going to have not 15, but 10 minutes to plan. You have paper, you have um, Sharpies on your table. Please make a clear plan of what your prototype is going to be. Each person knows what their role is. CEO, you know what you're supposed to do. CDO, you, you know what you're supposed to do. COO, you know what you're supposed to do. Regular employee, you know what you're supposed to do. Starts now. So create a photo collection that reflects the essence of this gathering, which is a first of its kind. 
of leaders and change makers from all over Africa. So, what are you thinking? Right. So I think for developers, you know, we mainly don't wear. Um, we're mostly wearing like shirts and trousers and jeans and sneakers, right? So I think you should embody trousers, shirts and sneakers and embody people that are like dressed in like the um, African print attire and then entrepreneurs wearing um, the, um, sorry, like shirts and then tucked in and all that. So I think you should represent those three sets of people. So we can like com combine the, the jumpsuit and the dress and the, the jumpsuit and the skirt. Could be like, I don't know, but we can call it, but that's... Yes, it's gonna be a little bit this, um, a little bit played, so that it shows there's a difference here. There's a skirt at the back. Okay, like a symmetric. Yes. Can I do it? Maybe as the background. Yeah, yeah. I think so. That's stunning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. That show that there's unity, yeah, actually that one. The 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 one that shows more hands because it shows uh, diversity and unity. Mm. Since we are all from different African countries, so maybe we can have uh, the map of Africa and hands around to say something like we are United Africa. Yeah. So we are all collaborating, but in our individuality. Africa. Then, then those connections that are hand, that you know, those connections now be hands to connect different parts of the African continent. Just like he's he's joined, yeah, yeah, exactly. So hands will now be around, and then at each point, these hands will now be there, will join. You make um, interchangeable um, belts. You know the ones you yeah. wear on. Two. So it's like um, having all these kind of hands being together and giving them the training or the resources available to be the next version of themselves. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Point, what they call this. I think it's better just go for an English name. There's style in it, and it's sort of creative because it's not like a regular kind of way. Yeah. So change your style. No, like. So how, really quickly, um, just everybody just chime in when you want, um, how, how do you, how are we going to do this? We have, we have clay, that's the type of material. This product could be sold in the owner finger. So we have to come up with a product that can be and we will take the picture of each, each of them. I drew, draw something like uh, this. Mm -hmm. So the name I will have our um, company is... Uh... No, but you know the reason why that might not work? Because we're using the French But it's a prototype. Okay, so It is now time to move into execution. However, comma, there's a slight problem. All the executive teams of every company have been fired. That's the bad news. The entire executive team have been fired, not my decision. The board of your respective companies have met and have decided to fire the entire executive team. The good news, however, is that since there's vacancy in every company, the other companies are hiring. Yes? So here's what's going to happen. The executive team from this from this table is going to move to this table, and from this table is going to move to this table. You need to move into execution. You've got 30 minutes, and your time starts now. We can just work in that. You've had, I do, you've networked before. You've shared about uh, what you're doing, doing in here, and all that. So you must understand. You have an idea, an experience with that. The tag that the CEOs are doing, right? So they can't really kind of give out their best to execute uh, the work. But if it seems more of collaboration, even if the CEO is not there, as an employee, I can take off the role and execute whatever is needed. So that's why we're going for this year. 
I see this is mapped out and they stick figures in their hands. What are you, is it going to be like hand cutouts? So you flatten out a dough and just cut out the shape of hands that are thinking, or are you rolling things that are 3D? Like what's... Okay, so everybody has a little notebook. Everybody has a little notebook, yeah? Yes? Your notebook. Take your notebook and answer these questions for me. You can, do, you can draw this little grid over here. Why? Yes, these could be correlated, but does not necessarily have to be. A time when you felt frustrated. And why a time when you felt successful, can we please focus, and a time when you felt like you were failing, and why, yep. I'm crossing these two out because they are opposite of each other, yep. most successful and when you are failing the most. Okay? <coughs> Thank you. You have two minutes to finish this. Reflect on the last half hour. There's been an opinion that was ignored. Cross your T's, dot your I's. Cool. Anybody, anybody remembers a time when they felt frustrated? Yeah? So when I was assigned to a new company to just work with understanding the company's vision. <laughs> so that was like I was just applying my previous companies, uh, what we were working on, but I got to know that was not even what this company is about. So that was where I, I, I felt, uh, felt frustrated. I felt most frustrated in my new company um, because my CEO was kind of clueless. <laughs> he wasn't contributing. All he was, um, he didn't know what, to, he felt like he didn't know what to do. And he didn't even induct us into the company telling us um, what we needed to do, what the company was about. We just came and cut this, cut that, and we didn't know why. We, so it felt really wasteful. Okay. Yeah. So you felt disempowered, felt, yes. frustrated, disempowered. Okay. Um, Maybe explain a little bit what made you feel disengaged. Is it that there was already an existing <laughs> culture that you felt like you didn't fit in? Is it that the, the personalities? What, what, was it? what was it? Well, it was uh, the problem at hand. Uh, at first, it didn't, feel, it didn't feel as exciting. Okay. Uh, and uh, all we could do is listen and see where this goes. If it be hoping it comes, becomes exciting in the process and I can engage more. Um, so we, we had an idea to express um, Africanness in, in, in different elements and um, go in with gender balance whereby we have a man and a woman but using the various hairstyles that makes us African. So Afro and maybe with the beard. But we had different elements of Africa in each uh, photo or the, the, one, the ones we're going to end. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, so I found it really frustrating. Um, well, the failure, the failure part came in from like having to make massive changes in a quick amount of time. As I was filling in this form, the creative ideas that come in for really cool things that I would be able to contribute towards this team, but we had X amount of time to da da da, -da and we all kind of hurriedly did our best to, to put something together. But that, that was kind of a, like a failure moment, you know. Yeah. So we'll come to that in a second. I'm going to have a quick conversation with the executives in the room. Yes? So executives, can you quickly just identify yourselves? That's CEO, COO, CDO. Yeah? Okay. All right. So got a couple of questions for you guys. First of all, um, in your role, were you successful? And it's up to you to define what success was. And any, anybody can comment on that. Do you feel that in your role as an executive, you were successful? If yes, why? If no, why not? Tell us what role you were I'll explain the role of, us, of the CEO. Uh, so in my first company, I, I felt like I was so, not... So did you feel you were succeeding? Did you say successful? General, at the end, okay. successful, but how it started to my first company. Okay, with my first company, I felt like we could not communicate together, especially with the executives, because reaching out a decision with the executives was not possible. We had to go to 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 the employees, and uh, <laughs> so it was it was almost. I I just had the sense that probably here I'm feeling like something's happening. So, but this the the second uh, company I came in, I saw what it was well structured for me. There was an idea, there was a flow, and uh, the engagement now that uh, we, we came up with, so that it was a common intent together. So I want to clarify a couple of things. Did I hear you say that in your original company, <laughs> you felt that decision was exclusively within the executive team, and you struggled with that? No, I was trying to say if the executive team could come up with a decision okay. to be implemented in the company, but the executive could not come to some agreement then we went to the employees and I just started So regular employees, I'm coming to you as well, don't worry <laughs> I know you've got a lot to share, but we'll get to that in a second Okay, and, and, and if I understand correctly, you said when you came to your second company you felt that there was a team spirit that yeah, so I felt there was a structure. In the first company, we had to establish that structure. I came into the second company, there was a structure. Without so the leadership, there was a structure. There was a, there was a structure. They, the, how they communicated the idea, I got it. It was interesting. So I asked our executives, should we go with it? So they, they said yes. And there was this engagement by everybody to, to contribute to the idea. So I felt successful at the end. Thank you. I came to the new company and all of us decided to put heads together to just try to make the company work mm -hmm. and then it actually works. We all put heads together with the executives and the employees and it actually came out well. So how did you feel personally? I felt excited. Yeah? yeah. How you felt the entire time you were engaged in the process? No. No. So yeah. what, what was the change? What did it move from to what? So no. you ended on excitement, but what were you feeling at first? No, like the way we came up we join hands together to work on a certain project. Yeah. I'm going to switch to the regular employees. Right here. <laughs> when you opened that envelope and you saw regular employee, what did it do to you? And how did it affect the way you engaged? Um, well, I wasn't excited about being regular. Because I thought I wouldn't make the big decisions of the company. I would and just be... Yes, I would just be an ordinary person, just expected to do everything. Um, but as we went by, I was giving out, I was um, contributing ideas that everyone loved and I felt like, yeah, not so bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, initially, when I opened the envelope, it was kind of um, new to me. Um, just being regular and then having the conversation with the team also and at the very beginning on the first team we had a really good CEO he would like ask what do you think about what's going on and so when he left when the executive team left and it was just the two of us what I did was reach out to her to make sure that we have you know similar notes and we have um, we both understood what was going on so that when the next team came that was why we were able to explain to them what the um, what our idea was all about and what we wanted to achieve at the end of the day. So how do you feel at the end of the experience? Do you feel good? I feel really good because just the fact that they gave you really good feedback on the work we did as a team. 
in the first company, um, since we we got the the vision, uh, we, we we sort of had a shared understanding of what we're supposed to do, and um, it was much much easier to s find people to do the right kind of tasks. Now the elements changed, got fired by the board, and changing into a new company with new people, and then as you're trying to understand what you're supposed to do, then suddenly the people who understood the vision of that company are all fired, and that's the people, um, the regular employees, because th they are the ones that actually work with the customers and all that. They're fired, and then you're supposed to now figure out what's the next step. So um, I guess for me, all those elements made it unsuccessful. Thank you. And I want to ask a question still to the executives. When you opened that envelope and that role was revealed to you, what effect did it have on you? <laughs> yes. Somebody haven't heard from you. Yes. Okay, yeah. So my role was chief design officer. So when I saw I'm like, okay, this is totally not for me. Like <laughs> I would be able to um, perform well on this role. But then it was actually better than I thought. Yeah. We're here our original side what i loved is that everybody had a voice to i don't know the english changia contributes <laughs> contribute to the conversation and with their ideas and it was a space where everybody was open for, for that so not seeing that reflected in the photos that we saw then i wonder if the environment didn't allow my very dear employees to share their vision openly and their ideas because then it's it, it wasn't as we came up with it together, yeah. Okay, I was also the chief design officer and it was very frustrating for me because in the first company was supposed to design a sculpture. I didn't really understand <laughs> what I was supposed to do or resonate with what we were supposed to do. And then the second one was very good because uh, the previous employees that we found there had already done groundwork and, and also I also learned to appreciate uh, different leaders because initially I thought, how am I going to be able to pull through this? But having the other members of the ex executive and the regular employees, so we all work together. Can you comment on the impact it had on you in the way you felt like you engaged or did not engage? Like when you were like, ah, this is not for me. Like not really, not feeling engaged, but I wasn't really sure I was going to be able to execute the role very well. Yeah. Well, for me, when I found out it was an easy thing, because it was COO, and I just needed to get operations right. Looking at the table, I felt like we had everything we needed, so like, no work for me, essentially. Uh, pretty much, voila, like, you know, operation, you have to bring resources together and ensure that everything is done. But looking at the problem and the materials we had, it, it occurred clearly that this is something we have what we need to do. Um, okay, I think in my... This may, in company I was more engaged because immediately I came I was given something to do immediately so I think at that stage they already had an idea what they wanted the regular employee to do so immediately I came in they handed me over you know the sketches to court and then you know I got pretty busy but then I do my first company because the executives are still thinking and thinking and thinking so we really couldn't get anything so you, done you actually felt so. the separation there. yeah first company there was a separation we the regular employees had to come up with an idea for the execution, we, are, we started executing it, you know. So before we, we left, and then we came here, I think two of them uh, didn't really vibe with the CEO because he didn't give them what to do, but the CDO really gave me something to do. So I think I really like the second uh, yeah, company. Any, any other regular employee wants to? When I opened the envelope and I saw as a regular employee, I would I say I had some kind of mixed feelings okay. because um, I make a lot of decisions. So the role I play most times, I have to do a lot of thinking and have to, I, I, I lead most of the teams. Mm. So seeing this was, okay, let me just relax self. Mm. You know, let me take a break and watch others do it. Mm. So it was, um, in a way it was exciting and in another way it was, okay, yeah, it's cool. Let me just relax and let the pressure off this time around. Mm. So that was, that was how I felt. So it shifted your paradigm of thinking about being an icon of change. Uh, you're like, I'm the icon, I'm up there. Right, and, and, and often we tend to forget that there's actually a massive, you know, amount of support that we get behind.
right? That may not get the stages that somebody was asking about earlier, right? That may not get to go to the conferences, that may not get to hold a microphone and tell the stories of how they are making change. And yet, their contribution are as significant, if not even more significant than you, being the poster child almost, right? Of whatever story or initiative that you're carrying, isn't it? Right? I want to shift gears a little bit. Now, yes, this is a little bit of a silly, you must, you know, you must have stepped in here, it's like, okay, leading effectively the essential skills. Surely there's a laundry list and a presentation that's going to be given to us about what all these essential skills are. I would like to argue that in just the last 45 minutes, you have had to exercise every single one of those essential skills. Now, I want to use this metaphor of being the CEO of your funny little enterprise here, doing fashion and doing sculpture into the real world, right? I think this was a metaphor and there are parallels to be drawn, yeah? So I'm gonna ask you this question. What from this experience of the last 45 minutes can you relate to what you see in the real world, in your own journey, as a leader, as a follower, as a change maker, as an icon, whatever you wanna call it? Yes, ma'am. Nadine, yes? <laughs> So um, I, I think um, one thing that I saw is that in, the, um, in this world, um, this time in this life, uh, we are forced sometimes to go in and fill in shoes that someone has already like worn and we have to like continue their journey and stuff and um, sometimes it can be overwhelming because you do not even know what is going on but then you have to like catch up and try and uh, um, make it a success, uh, yeah, so. Yeah. So that experience of s stepping into a new role yeah. or stepping in anybody's company is yeah. in real life it happens. People get fired, people get rehired. You join companies that have already an established culture, right? You join initiatives that somebody else had envisioned before you and yet you're expected to pick up the mantle. Yes? Yes. Okay, uh, one major lesson um, taken away from here is team spirit. Yes. Actually, that's a good idea. Go back to your original uh, organizations. Yeah? To your original organizations. And pair up. Make this quick. We are running a bit out of time. Just pair up with somebody and have a two minute conversation. One minute each. Yeah? I'll tell you in a second. Can I have your attention, please? Thank you. So. Share your sticky note with the person next to you about your strength and your weakness and just hear the feedback, yeah? In terms of how they have observed or not observed, maybe they have observed something else about you, your strength or weakness. In this group, I'd recommend do, actually, you know what? I'll pair up with you. I'll be right back, okay? So pair up with somebody, share your sticky note. Well, I hope you can remember, yeah? If you can't find your book. I like to, I kind of like to follow the rules. Okay. Um, I didn't figure out any weakness. Um, okay, yeah, giving out tax. So dedicating tax to team members is something I find really difficult. I observed this one. I thought you were very um, diligent in your ability to you know, draw the instructions. I could see elements of um, maybe not giving tasks because that was not your role, but uh, I saw that you were very structured in your approach, right? So you were, you know, you had... Uh, when I'm being, I, I, I'm impatient, I'm impatient, I'm impatient, I'm impatient, I'm impatient, People, when 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 you cause like patients because of not being patient. Also, like well, what we did was we able to point how to bring out this. I'd like to ask for a couple of volunteers, uh, people who not only did they write those strengths or weaknesses, but it was demonstrated in the activity that we've just done that you would like to share, right? Especially if it's a, an area that you, you were very aware that you are either very good at or not so good at. Anyone? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, 
I think I'll just go jump right into um, when I'm being led strengths. Yeah. So um, I find it easy to like follow vision and like get things done immediately because I exhibited that like with both teams. And here I was like very happy being a regular employee because uh, when I read the instructions, it was all about fashion. I was like, God, make me a regular employee, please. Uh, being the only guy on the team. And yeah, I was able to follow the vision that was defined by the executives and quickly got to the tax that was given to me, yeah. And also getting there and seeing photography and uh, we needed to get some tax done. Um, it was easy getting to the flow of all of that. Yeah. Did you guys conquer? Is that, like, is that really how he... Time, keeping time. I'm, I'm good with that. But I'm not good with taking criticism. They call it constructive criticism. But I can't take criticism when you don't give me solution. Like just saying, this is not good. So I'm stuck there not knowing if it's not good, which, which direction should I go to? Like, that's the, the worst thing that I um, And I'm impatient when we can't keep time. So, so you experienced all of that in the last four or five minutes? In, yes, there. in my second group. I'm not going to point fingers. In my second group, <laughs> uh, <laughs> impatient because of not keeping time. When, when, the, or when you keep saying five minutes, I'm like, guys, let's finish. Can we finish? Can we finish? I'm like, we need to keep time. We need to get things done the right way, but also let's keep time. Yeah. And, yeah. So when I saw a regular employee, the first thing I did was try to look for who the CEO is. <laughs> I was like, who's the CEO? So um, I didn't necessarily have a problem with being a regular employee. I just wanted to be sure I, I still have a voice even if I was regular. So would they listen to me if I come up with a suggestion? So I wanted to see who's the person leading me. Is he willing to take my suggestions if I contribute? So I felt like it was my business to all they had to do was listen and take of course, absolutely. So when he was coming up with a name, he came up with a name. <coughs> and he has Ubuntu or something like that. Uh, first of all, I didn't know the meaning. I don't know what it means, but he explained to us. And then I just felt, oh, I have a suggestion. How about to make it um, change your style? This is what it means. This is what it means. And this is how I present. I was like, oh, perfect. Everybody agreed. And so he listened. It made me feel welcome, like I have a voice. We all be, um, worked together as a team member which is very key when leading a company. Uh, one, one person was not just like, oh, you, you have to do this. We all did more like a collective work together. And it's really, and the CEO was able to um, carry us along with the vision. So that, was able, that really helped us to be able to come up with something, which was really great. I think what was, I think what was powerful was uh, the CEO was able to Look at look at everyone and what everyone's doing, and when the time was running, she just delegated, and we had to act on our the CEO, yes. the, CEO. the CEO, the boss. Yes. <laughs> yeah, like her ability to delegate quickly because she, she asked him a question like he was she was like like w when do we work now? And then he started responding, and then he asked she asked me for a design, and then I started looking at the team. What is the design? So that was quite good. I'm kind of a person who naturally always find herself leading. So when I found myself uh, in the regular, uh, regular employee place, I'm like, okay, <laughs> but this is not my, I don't feel like it's my place. But still, when we start working, I really like the dynamic because I was able to speak up and tell my ideas without my CEOs telling me, oh, this is a shitty idea, you don't have to do that. But they, they, they took my ideas and also, uh, what I liked is that um, he was able to tranche, um, to take yeah, to take the, the right decision when everyone was even uh, was hesitating. I tend to want to quickly do it, and I had a vision as I knew what I wanted to do, and we actually ended up doing it. Um, is that he actually got us to really buy into why are we doing this, right? So I think that is important, getting people. Even if you know how to do it, you're like, I, I know how to do it. Just He got us to all contribute and say, why is this important to us? What do you want to put in there? But I think leadership doesn't only stop at the vision. You have to give people a sense of this is how we're going to go. So even if I buy into your vision and I don't know how to do it or I feel like we didn't have the mission. Like if you say my, mis my vision is to build, to end poverty, but you don't say uh, I will do this through eradicating X, Y, Z, then there's, it's not useful. So uh, kudos to the CEO for getting us to all buy into his vision. In retrospect, I'm thinking we spent maybe a little bit too much time 
you know, doing that, doing that right? And I, if if I if if I did it again, I would start assigning roles earlier, right? One of the things. Yeah. Um, one of the things that we learned, that I learned personally from there, was we got there and th there was one repository of knowledge, which was her, and she was the leader for the first five minutes, right? And that was really important, you know. Even though we didn't get the number of images and things like that, we ended up executing. We feel, you know, uh, with all the technological limitations and everything, you know, the vision, the the, the finish might not have been what you, you, you imagine, but we we gave you what two minutes to learn how to download an app, learn how to use it, and execute. And we didn't have a hairdresser to do the hair, so we drew it on, <laughs> right? Um, and, and, and things like that. So yeah, so y you had the sort of th limitations that were brought on by technology, uh, limitations that were brought on by you know um, getting t waiting too long to get people to buy in and things like that. Yeah, how's that? Look, obviously, in the last 60, 70 minutes, we were not going to learn all that is to learn to become a better and a more effective leader. But if you just listen to all your comments that you're making about moments when you were frustrated, about moments when you were at your best, about your strength, about your weaknesses, you are always alluding to elements of your own emotional intelligence. You're always alluding to elements of whether you have self-awareness or not. You're alluding to whether you are able to empathize and be a team player and be able to listen and listen actively. Right? If you're able to embrace a role or not get too carried away by the role and the label and the title. Right? It's a question of whether or not you're able to exercise your social skills. Are you able to communicate and communicate effectively and not make somebody feel like you are con condescending upon them? We've seen when people felt disengaged. It's like when you know, I'm being told to go figure out an idea because there is an executive team over there that I can't really empathize with. You understand? Right? So as you you know, go back into being icons of change in your day-to-day -day life, I certainly hope that you'll be a bit more aware of yourself, how you are perceived, how you are received, and how you carry yourselves as leaders, and how you treat others that you work with. Because you had a chance to do that just now, to treat others and to be treated by others. So you will carry those experiences with you, right? Okay. Well, thank you very much. Yeah? I'll see you guys a bit later. Thank you.